Lynette Roberts, Gods with Stainless Ears Part 1. The Argument The poem opens with a bay wild with birds and somewhat secluded from man, and it is in front or within sight of this bay that the whole action takes place, merging from its natural state into a supernatural tension within the first six stanzas. War changes its contour. Machine gun is suggested by the tapping of a woodpecker, which gives out the identity of the gunner and provides his nationality, a dragon of wings. Soldiers and armoured corps arrive. Military parade and propaganda, factory workers and the fatigues. The rural village described within view of this estuary, where soldiers wander during the short hours of their leave. The gunners in action, and of one in particular. He, belonging to a Welsh regiment, reading a bill by gunlight, and a letter from his girl in which he tells him they are to expect a child. Night falls, and with it comes the wrecking of a plane. Today the same tide leans back, blue rinsing bay, with new beaks scissoring the air, a care away, cadence of sight and sound, poets and men, rediscovering them. Saline mud, siltering, wet with marsh pinks, fresh as lime stood, whitening fields, Gulls and stones attending them, curl yews disputing coverts, pipe back, stem, plaintive legs deep in the ironing edge that outshines the shale, a railway line washed flat, or tin splintered from a crab green cave. This is St. Caddick's Day, all this St. Caddick's estuary, and that bell tolling, Abbey Paddock, sunk, sad as ancient monument of stone. Trees veil, exhale cyprine shave, widowing Homeric hill, green pinnacles of bone. Escaping from these, tomb and cave, quagmires, migrate, draw victim eyes with luster sheen, a suck, confer void residue from Gillette veins, who talk now yield, calling others, those who talk from Clan Stefan, Clan Gain, and Clanny Bree. No water eyes squinting or too near madness could fail such a trek. In this same old soddenness, in deep corridor graves, culverts open, their gates kedged in mud, preening feathered air, elucidating shapes flecked with wool glints, and small affiliated tears. So walk swiftly by, for today, Pridian, tears raven's wings to grate the bay, and John Roberts, covered with ligustrum, always sanitary and discreet, rose to and fro from bell house to fennel, floating quietly on the tide. In fear of fate, flying into land, Orcadian birds pair, and peel away like praying hands, bare aluminium, beak to clinic air, frame soldier, lonely whistling in full corridor train, Ishmaelites wailing through the window pane. Oh, the cut of it, woe sharp on the day, scaled in blood, the ten-toed woodpecker, a dragon of wings, one, six, two, zero, B, six, four, punctuates machine gun from the quarry pits. Soldiers, tanks, lorry make siege on the bay. Freedom to boot. Conclamation, compunction, compunction, discomforts of the mind deride their mood. Birds on the stirrups of the water bride flush up, and out of time a tintinabulation of voice and feather fall in out of the ocean sky. A sanctuary taken, trenched underfoot. For today, today, the simple bay pined for out of reach. The atmospheric bog foot out of season. Culverts close their gate. Machine sets against clay, irons a new uniform. Trees crisp with metalink blue. Screen, submarine suns, and basket of bees, but men nettled with pie-powdered feet, angry as rooks on their pernickety beds, training for another Catreus, said Evans' shop. Dissimilar, dissundered, cranch crake, cranch crake, a shiver, a hungered, inhalation, chironic clouds crack in their brain. Who was to be ring carrier for gerrymandering gerontocracy? The officer yellow with Argeria? Soldiers seldom suffered from this, for silver scarcely smoothed their palm. Congrieved, 
constrained, condemned, subversive. For humanity blaffed this and much else besides. Hell would chill a chitter chatter at the sight of their con flowing misery. Shun. Father precipice of den high rock, mother mild of Pembroke streams, have mercy on us, cantation us to shoal deep winter. Men fall to arms, men stemmed to die for the century, then leap fast to the bone. Take wailing bayonets from the ice of wound, emblaze your handrails. Men fall to arms, men purred to fight, each other, so can we foresee death, set against each life, time. Jagged bitterns, grad grinds all, now we ruined in life bound, but attention in field again build on lime and rubble. To what age can this be compared? Men slave spit and spade, glean life pure, accelerate oxidized roads, Drill new hearts and hearths. Impale the money goaders' palisade. And you, of acetated minds, workers with xanthine faces, revolutionize your land, holding the simple measures of life in your hand, remembering navies and peacocks never sail together in the aftermaths of disaster. Into Euclidean cubes, grid air is planed. Propellers scudding up grit and kerosene Braid hulls wailed five miles hollow, spidering each man stark on steel web, hammering in rivets ambuscade, interrupted by sirens screaming tirade. With machine strength wearing blinkers and mask, will of iron moulding surface to brain chained, while below in well shafts soldiers, soldiers squat and cark, shell and peel pods and spuds, girders craned. Into Euclidean cubes, the tempered air is pained. The brown paper parcels of sappers who ask, shelling and peeling, how is Jane today? Barricade against blast and red-hot ingots, clutch of rich ricocheting wheels. Hell's dim decade, interrupted by sirens, screaming tirade. Where each day ingrained is a chain task, a clatter of clogs, winding of nerves, fatigues, Thinning into vocal farms, war limed grey, stately as battleships heeled to cove. There, force, into Euclidean cubes, carol air is pained. When daily the water trudge with battering can, striding out of snail from sprockets of kale, where tractors carch like nasturiums crack, the window pane, to rattle of boiling buckets, sleeve of plane rippling over hedge. To each striped tidy plot aproned women work, spading clay and coal dust into peel jet. To them, to iron bedsteads, kitchens, farms cut open with grates. To calico, village scintillating like mothball white on a hill, cresting cascades on red rock, throwing out a shower of birds, woodcutters and harrowing of gulls, where women titans are weather vanes who fetch in the cows who wander the valley prints, greening the squares of their eyes, to men ploughing strig and stubble, near geese full of white airs, crisping out their quills, whose eyes and ears surrounded with orange cord, detect and hear the running pads of spiders, or better round the slow-slipping dairy roof, where rabbits hang punched on the door, to chink of ceramic jugs clazed with the lead of years, Brass and blue glister under paraffin pools, by which everything rubied glows, bays and lace curtain to night, intrinsic to seal light, crouched black on summer sills, until the water sky of dawn flickers a sail wash shimmering aquamarine into TB and disinhumed rooms, where past is not dead, but comes up hot suddenly, sharp as drake stone. To them soldiers return offer chickweed love, others scribble the same formula home. All this cover with blue dome of glass, and engrave the village Clanny Bree 42, where O.K. saltates the Kimrick heart, and BBC blares from Bermondsey tongue. Fine gentle ways fill time's gravestone, from Stonehenge blue to granite sharp black. Old women die folded in skirts, their culture entombed, 
upstarts mock at what was gracious before, work out their crudeness onto change and cloth. Out of whalebone huts, gunners drone, you with the gypsy slit on your ears, Vaughn, what do you make of my lover? No answer. Who's there in the chapel yard who bends? Prophets warm in the shade sign. Black signatures. In the red book of Hergest, and cross their toes to confuse the principality. What's that withered field? England. Ah, what's that purple pool of pansies lingering in so memorial a town? Culture of London. Oh, so, pull down the bastard, pull down the flag, the flag torn down, emerald on unfortunate field and red floor its great perfection, without sound crept back like myth into folds of earth, grew greener shafts of resilience. Under the washing line of blue, who's speaking now? Who's there in the chapel yard who bends? Mary Ann is cleaning the graves. Where's the professor? He should know. If the tide swept back for St. Caddock, where was God to smooth their corrugated mouths, strike a path to the Lochan pubs? Where's John Roberts, old Charon, and his coracle? Who's there low at the tide who blends? Morgan the poacher, setting horsehair with broad bean and hook, sly old bugger snaring sheldrake. The state trapper, breaming boots, bay full of spit shine and brass, sun splintered on waves, cupping up, clear as beer sparkle. You've had it, mon. Where's the professor? He should know. He who comes from St. Caddock's chapter, giant or legendary prince, who loves one and no other, turns in his mind left, right, left, right, tapping boot wry in the dong, coloured pool wonders which way and why. Without chevron, yet born under that gyre, astronomical sign, without chevron, kid crests his regimental badge, poor Khalid Kimru, unquestioning, unanswering, remaining just the same, braiding wire with chilling hands, stands under manurial showers till the lurid sun spills across the sky like a shot Indian. Then to read and relate by gunlight indelible, we incarnate, even if flesh rot, you, st you shall have heaven, I am yawed at your side. Serene latch and cambric joy, floating above you shall still overlook pots and pans, yet patch your trousers willingly. This is no prodigal, there is no madrigal, but my word cleaved to your flesh, and you know it. And you know it, so need not fear. Indigo, a green mist humouring a janta woe, cool palm lighting woodbine, out of pocket, red ink on pink lined paper. Bryn Williams, carp for wire netting and staples, two shillings and eight pence. What setting moves mares to play chess on rocks? Guns stand manned, still stand, mind alone, knocks. Senile coast beetle browed down to citrine. Rush of sea. Monster knight strides up, grating rock to rib of death with hide of rusty knuckle. A pinpoint glows, whirls, grows, whinnying. Larger wheels over the whole damn estuary. Falling huge, dilating in the two closed nightmare, their own eyes enlarging the mares, smash rock, lift skirts and torques and wade out to sea. A wearying of Semitic wings, High cordite flash that cools the seaboard of the world, bridling of nerves, thud, soundless, smoke fumes raise a black hearse that hovers in the sky, faces forged into icing bags, challenge the chill, fretting in waves to clear the plain, leave crimson steam, scattering of pain on Europa's walls, atonement of blood, sea-footed red, fighting scarlet minutes over immeasurable earth. Is reflected this day by sodden arterial men crushed under magenta monstrosities, blood curdling into dog whale. I'll who then, friend? Chime, birds grip to black shining cliff and wing foul of tar to rift in swiveling sea, 
cold hard as hand on rock. Sea ride neither matched nor considered in flock, go down there far, into groves of foreign glitter, on water mosaic of running tides, bitter with sweet birds and unfortunate flesh, nothing fitter than avidity could return such mawkish litter. Go down there further and see the lucid plain of night, strained with piteous men, drowned in water swills of crossing waves, lifting asteroid heads, so alike, so different from the petroleum sky, striking death too soon, and nearer and sooner than they should. This dawn, mauve as iron, whispers as the biting jest.